In this lesson, we'll install a graphical desktop environment on our Ubuntu server using the XFCE package and VNC server. We will then use a VNC viewer to connect to the server remotely from our local computer. This means we'll be able to administer our server through a Ubuntu graphical user interface. Think of it like attaching a monitor, keyboard, and mouse right to your virtual machine. Before we get started, let's reboot our system because we've already made quite a number of changes. We can do this right through our existing session. Just type reboot. Sorry, a correction. Type sudo reboot because we need to be have root privileges to be able to reboot the system. Enter your password. You'll be disconnected from your existing session. So if you're on a Windows machine, you'll need to log back in using PuTTY or Terminal if you're on a Mac. It may take one to two minutes for your system to fully reboot. So if you can't connect immediately after, just try again after a minute or so. So I'm gonna close, I'm gonna close this session window. I'm going to double click on PuTTY. I'm going to load the My Linode settings. Make sure that your private key file is loaded for authentication. So remember the key is located in the, on the desktop in the keys folder we created some time ago and load the private.ppk key. Now go back to your session and click open. Make sure you log in as user Bob and enter your passphrase. Okay, since we're back in the system, the server was successfully rebooted. And I'll just expand the console window. Once you're back in, run your update and upgrade commands. It's a good practice to update your system prior to any new package installations. It only takes a minute. Type in sudo apt get update. Enter the password for Bob. Now type in sudo apt get upgrade to install the packages. Enter yes for any prompts. Okay, so that's finished. We've upgraded the system. Next, we're gonna install the XFSE4 and tight VNC server on our server. So you're gonna type in the following command. and press enter. Type Y at any of the prompts. I'm just gonna resize the console window just so you can see better. To complete the VNC server's initial configuration, type VNC server. Now we'll be prompted to enter a, an access password to remotely connect to our Ubuntu server. So make sure you enter a password you can easily remember and verify it. Next, you'll be prompted to create a view only password. The view only password will only allow the user to view files, but not make any changes. This is great if you're doing things like presentations, but for our purposes, we want full control over the server. So don't worry about creating a view only password. So just type N and press enter. 
After that's complete, VNC Server completes the installation of VNC, including default configuration files and connection information. Next, we need to do some additional configuration on our VNC Server. First, we need to tell our VNC Server what commands to perform when it starts up. These commands are located in a file called xstartup. Since we're making changes to VNC configuration files, we need to stop the default VNC server instance that's running on port 5901. To do so, type in the following command. Before editing our new x startup file, let's back up the original in case we need it later. So to do that, type in the following command. and press enter. Now open the X startup file with nano text editor. Enter the following and press enter. So in the nano text editor, you're gonna enter the following command block. Here, we've instructed VNC's GUI framework to read the user's .xresources file. This file contains important settings of the graphical desktop, such as terminal colors, cursor themes, and font rendering. The third line tells the server to launch XFCE. This package contains all the graphical software needed to manage the server. So once you've done that, Press Control X to exit, but make sure you type Y when prompted to save, and then press Enter. Next, we need to grant the user, in this case Bob, executable permissions on the X startup file to make sure VNC server will be able to access it properly. To do that, type in the following, and press Enter. To be able to easily control our VNC server, we need to set it up as an Ubuntu service. This will allow us to start, stop, and restart the VNC server as needed. First, open an, the service file with nano using the following command and press enter. Now inside the text editor, enter the following block of commands. Here we've declared some common settings that VNC will refer to, like username and display resolution. Make sure you replace Bob with your username if you're using a different username. If you've been following uh, along with this tutorial, you're likely using the same one I am. Next, enter this command block. And this allows us to start VNC server and receive feedback on the status of our start request. This command block allows us to stop VNC server and receive feedback on the status of the stop request. This last block allows us to restart VNC server and receive feedback on the status of the restart request. And that's it for the file. That, that's all we need to put in there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to exit the file. So press Control X. Again, make sure you save the changes. Type in Y when prompted. And then press Enter to write to the file. Now we need to change the permissions of the VNC server file uh, to make sure it's executable. So to do that, type in the following command. And press enter. Now test the VNC server service by creating a new VNC server instance. Use the following command to do this. 
and press enter. So we've successfully started the VNC server instance. With our VNC server installed, it would be a good time to reboot the system. Type in sudo reboot, enter your password. The system will shut down and this will terminate the existing session. We'll reconnect in the next lesson after we install our VNC viewer.